All right, so we're gonna do the transaxle oil filter service here, the 50 hour, the initial service on this X580 John Deere. So I'll show you the uh, maintenance chart here just to, to prove that we're not making this up, that this is real. And then uh, we'll get into uh, what we need to do. All right, so here is the maintenance schedule underneath the hood. And at the bottom here, you can see it says change the transaxle oil and filter. And that's at the 50 hours. And then after that, I think it goes up to yeah, 200 hours. So this is going to be the initial filter service. All right, and let's see what we got here for hours. So 73.2, so a little over, but that shouldn't be too bad. Like I said, it should be done at 50 hours. All right, so coming underneath here, there's two drain plugs that you need to take out in order to do this. I marked them with a uh, green marker. So we have this one up here, and I don't know if you can see that one in the back. That one as well needs to come out. It's marked in the book. So those are your two drain plugs. They are 14 millimeter, 9 16th fits on there, but it's a little sloppy. And then this is going to be where the filter is. That's just a 3 8 uh, like a ratchet drive. You can go with that. So we'll start by pulling these plugs out and get it draining here. It's a good idea to warm it up first. So we've been riding it around a little bit to get the oil warm, to get it to drain a little quicker. All right, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. There are issues with some lighting, but we're going to take this first plug out here. We're just using a... 3A ratchet here, not, not a lot of torque. So, not too bad. I wouldn't say that's torque very tight. Alright, so that's one. Get that draining. We might move the camera to the back side to see if we can look at the other plug a little easier. Alright, so now we're going to try for the the plug that's in the back there. It's easy to see in video, but it's kind of hard to get to when you get this pan in the way. Let's see if we can get in there and get it. Let's smoke so it's back a ways. One thing to note too, we did take out the, uh, the reservoir cap and uh, foam screen just to help it drain a little better. So you can kind of see, like I said it's kind of dark, it's hard to film this, but you can see the oil in the background there draining now. All right, now we're gonna tackle getting the filter out here. Like I said, that's just a 3 a plug here. This looks like it's plastic. Again, that's not very tight. Got a spring here on the filter. Yeah, move that light back a little bit, Thomas. Oh. Wow, this filter is completely gunked up with stuff. I think you can see it. There's actual chunks on this filter. So we'll take a look at the new filter and compare this one. All right, so here we're looking at the filter. So obviously the one on the right here is the old filter. And if you can see, these little chunks of stuff, that's actually sealant. So if we pull this, this little chunk out here, maybe I can get it. There you go. 
that's actually sealant from it must be from assembly when they put the the trans axle transmission together from tough torque so maybe that's why they want the the 50 hour service done on this because this thing is just full of uh, sealant pieces here so you kind of spin it through you can see all the sealant so definitely want to do the 50 hour service when they when they say and then here's the the filter on the the new filter on the left and then that like I said this plug here that has an o-ring on it the the kit comes with a, a new o-ring as well all right and then this is the the filter kit so the filter filter kit includes the filter and that o-ring for the plug but it's just in a John Deere box here all right so looking where the filter goes there it's hard to see I can't get a decent shot but in the middle there the filter kind of sits on a there's a flat machine surface and in the middle is the there's like a lip that that's got to fit in so when you put that filter in it should fit in there nice and flush below the actual lip of where the plug is I'll show you that here in a second all right so we're gonna put the filter in there there again is that this is a little rubber section here and like I said there's a little section that sticks up that's going to stick into this filter and then there's a flat machined area that that sits on it's kind of the the gasket so everything goes through the filter there so you want to make sure that that's on that there it is so you can see maybe you can't see but it's recessed in there so if you're putting it down and if it's flush with the housing you don't quite have it just keep kind of wiggling it around until it gets to where it needs to be you should be able to, there you should see now it sits below those threads when it's in here's the, the plug for that filter we did put a little bit of hydraulic oil just on the actual o-ring there and change the o-rings and this plug is plastic so you're gonna be careful with it So and the, the spring is what provides the resistance there, so when you're turning it out, if you can't turn it by hand, it's because that spring is pushing out on that plug that's to hold that filter in position. Like I said, I wouldn't go too much with this because it's not very tight, there is no torque spec, and it is just plastic, so don't go crazy with it. if it leaks and just give it a little bit of a turn all right so we're gonna put the first plug I took out back in just because I'm gonna reach across then to the back plug I don't want oil dripping on me if there's any any drips left here and again be careful with that because this is a aluminum case with a steel bolt here so and the washer does have a little uh, rubber o-ring on it a little piece of rubber to kind of seal it so it should be fine all right so we're gonna put this last plug in I'll just show you the plug I took out you can kind of see in the middle here it's a little little like uh, rubber o-ring I don't know it's not an o-ring but a rubber seal I guess if you want to call it that you can find this one in the back here just kind of wipe it clean Make sure there's nothing on that This is definitely hard to film here, get enough enough light and the right angles. I guess if you had the thing on a lift, maybe you could get a better video. So we'll tighten that one up and then we'll uh, start the filling process. All right, so for filling, it can be a trick because the, the fill is back here and to get a funnel in there is almost impossible. So what we did was we took this piece of vinyl hose here that is not oil rated and put a, a funnel, small funnel on the other end and that's how we're gonna put the oil in the actual uh, reservoir there to fill the transmission and uh, the oil that we're using is just the standard the John Deere low viscosity high guard um, we're not 100% sure on how much it takes we got two different uh, we got a spec sheet from John Deere and an owner's manual one says like 5.48 quarts and one calls for 5.6 quarts 
So we'll start with a gallon and we'll see we'll see how that uh, how that does. All right, so we're gonna give it a go here and start with our gallon jug here. Hold the funnel up a little higher, Thomas. Yep, higher, a little higher, yeah. Okay, it's coming now. All right. You should probably have the funnel a little higher. Bring it up, Tom. Yep, bring it up. Up higher. Otherwise, really stand up with it. It's going in. All right, we'll check back here in a little bit. All right, so we drove it around a little bit. We got the snowblower put on, and you can see it's still at the right level. We're not sure why the the book and both the the book and the maintenance sheet is calling for more oil than what came out. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know if if that's like a if the thing is completely disassembled, like installation, how much oil it should use. Um, we did have the lifting arms up all the way. Maybe that's why it didn't use as much oil. I'm not a not a hundred percent sure on that. So uh, I'll show you the snowblower here, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. All right. So this is a 47-inch two-stage. It's belt driven, and the 580's got the the assist lift or power lift so if you're wondering how that works there's a, a plate here that gets uh, pinned through on the, the front of the frame here and you get your normal John Deere hookups in the front here and then these arms go over top the axle they come down and then you put this triangular piece on the lift arms of the mower deck area there and that would will, will actually uh, lift and lower your snowblower so should be a pretty nice setup and we got the rubber straps instead of the chains so it shouldn't mark up the driveway at all. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll get some video of us blowing some snow a little later here. So, all right, we're gonna wrap it up. That'll be it for now.